Hi, it's Linda Rayner of lindarayner.com, career strategist, speaker, and coach. And in this video, I'm gonna help you to understand four reasons why you may be failing at interviews and what to do about it so that you can turn it around and start nailing those interviews and landing more job offers. Reason number one, you're lowering yourself in the presence of the employer. What I mean by this is, there's a good chance that you may be lowering yourself energetically when you're put in an interview situation. So you may be putting the employer above you almost on a pedestal and you see yourself as the lowly job applicant. What this does psychologically is in the eyes of the employer, they see you as almost less valuable because deep down you see yourself that way. Essentially, you're not showing very much confidence and confidence is the number one thing that you need to be successful in a job hunt. So to turn this around, you need to change the way you see yourself. At the end of the day, we're all the same. We're all human beings. So here's a technique that I call the consultant approach. So while you're preparing for the interview, instead of seeing yourself as any other job applicant, see yourself instead as a consultant who's going into a meeting with a potential client. When a consultant goes into a meeting, they don't see themselves as any less than the person that's sitting in front of them. Instead, they see themselves as someone who has value to give, has knowledge and skills that this position, this company needs. When you can see yourself from that perspective, instead of someone who's coming in and hoping for a job, and instead someone who has a certain set of knowledge and skills and qualifications that can help this company out, then the way that you'll act, the things that you'll say, and how you'll be in the interview will be quite different from the perspective of just being a job applicant. Reason number two, you think they control you. So this ties in with reason number one, that you're lowering yourself in the presence of the employers. But essentially, many people think that because the employers are asking the questions, that they control you. But that's actually quite the opposite. What you say and how you say determines exactly how they react and how they feel about you, because you're the one feeding them the answers. They have nothing else to evaluate on other than the answers that you provide them with. So if you answer their questions in a way that's confident, engaging, relevant, and tactful, then they'll also see you as that way. They'll see you as a high quality candidate. Remember, you control how they react by how you react to their questions. If you can remember that, you'll go a long way. Reason number three you're not telling them why you're a good fit every chance you get. A lot of people think that when they're being asked an interview question, that they're supposed to just answer that question directly and leave it at that. But that's not the case. You have to also tie it in to why you're a good fit for this position, even if they don't really directly ask you that. You have to add that on to your answer, every answer that you give. So when answering interview questions, there's usually two parts. Part one is the actual answer to the question that they've asked you. And then part two is why you're a good fit for that role. What makes you a good fit for this position? A lot of people miss out on part two. Without selling yourself every chance you get, you're missing out on perfect opportunities to really feed the employer with more and more reasons why you're the perfect one and only fit for this position. So always remember, when you think that you're done answering an interview question, Ask yourself quickly, wait, did I also mention why I'm a good fit for this role based on the answer I just gave? If you hadn't done that, then right away you have to add that on. And if you did, then perfect. And finally, reason number four, you're technically not a fit. There are some instances where certain employers will put up job descriptions that have duties that have no relevance to the actual job itself. And that's just simply because they didn't take the time to revise the job description. In that situation, there's really nothing you can do about it. It's beyond your control and, you know, not your fault at all. On the other hand, there are instances where a lot of people apply for jobs that they may only have 20 or 30 percent experience in doing and the rest of the duties they've never touched before. And if somehow you're able to land an interview with those types of jobs and you show up and they find out that you really don't have the technical expertise, then you're really just wasting your own time and their time. So try to avoid those instances and really just apply for the jobs that really make sense for you at this point in time. 
There you have it, four reasons for why you may be failing at job interviews and strategies to turn it around so that you can pass your interviews with flying colors and hopefully land more job offers. If you haven't already, then feel free to download a copy of my 10 resume hacks cheat sheet, which will give you tips and tricks on how to improve your resume to land more interviews and ideally job offers. If you like this video, then please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, share it with your friends. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.